Okay, so we're going to talk about um, math right now. How many like math? Three. No, I said how many like it. You don't raise your hand if you don't like it, right? No, I'm just kidding. Alright, so everyone hates these two words, fractions and decimals. You want to make it really simple for paramedic level math. Alright? So fractions obviously represent a fraction of the whole number, that's why it's called a fraction. And decimals are the same thing as fractions, just in a different form. All right, cool. Um, if you guys open your books, like I said, 721, it has um, all the units down there. Um, medical math uses the metric system. And in America, we don't use the metric system. So welcome to the fun part of this lab, lecture. All right, so it's pretty easy when we talk about uh, decimals and Fractions, pretty much dividing everything by 10. That's why the Europeans made it, because it was simple, by 10. All right, so if you're trying to go up, we multiply by 10. And when we're trying to go down, we divide by 10. Pretty simple. All right, <clears throat> any questions so far? I lose everybody. <laughs> yes, lost one, cool. Moving on. All right, so the metric system, like I said, based on multiples of 10, it uses length, volume, and weight. But guess which one we're going to probably end up using? Majority of the time will be volume, and sometimes it'll be weight. <clears throat> In case you didn't know what they were, that's what the numbers stand for. And we always start with the unit. So you'll always start in the ones column, which is just going to be the unit. And if we're smaller, then it's going to go down. And if it's larger, then it's going to go up. Here's what the, the prefixes are. All right. KL for kiloliter. Anything with L is liter. Anything with G is grams for weight. Anything with uh, meters is going to be um, for length. <coughs> Which one do you think we use quite frequently for weight? Kilograms. Kilograms, right? Kilograms. What's the number of kilograms to weight Two for uh, pounds? 2.2. I think that's going to be pretty easy to multiply at 3 o'clock in the morning on a cardiac arrest for a kid? Absolutely not, so I'm going to make it simple. You can see here's how they, how they change. So one, one kilogram, excuse me, one kilo is equal to a thousand, a thousand of the single unit, right? A kilo meaning a thousand. And micro meaning a thousand smaller than the unit, okay? That's going to kind of, that's what it kind of breaks down to over here. So we have one unit. Uh, we'll just start with mLs. That's what we're probably going to use majority of the time. Volume. So one mL, milliliter. It's also written as cc. So if we're going to go up 10, it goes to deciliter. If we're going to go up 10 more, it's going to be uh, about 100 milliliters. And if we're going to go up 10 more than that, and then it's 1,000 mLs or one liter, okay? No one's gonna say, the only thing we measure in deciliters is going to be blood sugar, and even then you're not gonna say, you know, 60 milligrams per deciliter, you're just gonna say, I can check 60, okay? Um, let's see what else is right here. Drugs are packaged in a variety of weights and volumes would require a demand, okay, cool. Right. And then volume. Here's how we do the volume. So if you want to get to milliliters, so you're at something small, and you want to go to something big, well, we need to take the liters into mLs, and here's, here's the formula. So we're going large to small, we multiply by 1,000. We're going small to large, we're going to divide by 1,000. So I'm going to show you all how to do that. So let's see how, this, how well this works out. So I have 100 milliliters. I need to know how many liters is that. How do I do that? Right. Do what? Do what you say? Move the decimal place over. Move the decimal, but notice there's no there's no decimal here. All right, I just wrote it as 100 already. Although we can understand that it's 100 zero zero point. That's a point zero, right? That's understood in math, right? This is the same thing as this. Mm -hmm. We just don't write it that way because, like I said, who makes decimals? Everyone raises their hand. Cool. All right, so what do we do? 
I don't have the decimal. I just multiply this by 10. Or excuse me, yeah, multiply it by 10. And it equals to, no, divide by 10. Thank you. Yeah, it's going to be uh, a tenth of a tenth of a liter. So it's going to be one, one tenth of a liter. All right. So 100 ml is one tenth of one liter. So your thousand bag, right? I'm cool with all the dividing and the multiplying. I just, I don't like it that way. I like how you said it with the decimal. I understand the decimal is always written there. So all you got to do is just move it one spot, right? Which, which, which direction? Left to right. Did I move it? Did I move my decimal this way or did I move my decimal that way? To the left. Move it this way, right? To the left. So it's going to be, I'm going to write it in a different color so we can all see it. It's going to be, oh, that looks like a crayon. That's not cool. That's not what I wanted. Right, so it's going to be 1, 0.00L, um, right? So tenth of a liter versus, yeah, I know it's 10. I get it. But it's, I understand we're moving the decimal to 1 to make it, make it a tenth. It's in liters versus in milliliters, all right? <clears throat> this is not really the best example. It's easier just to understand that fractions are 10. Odds are you will never have to really do this. Yes? Is it point, I'm sorry, is it point one? It's going to be point one, yes. But I'm just writing out a different, okay. different understanding of that. But yes, it says 10 liters down here. Understand that it's really one, one tenth. That's why I'm trying to see how confusing decimals can be. You have to figure out which way you're moving them, left or right. Um, so yes, yeah, so it'd be one tenth. This is why we don't use decimals. Because we never learned them from the get-go as kids, right? And it's much easier when we go the opposite way. So I have point 0.1 of a liter. I need to understand how many milliliters is that. Okay? So I would just times this by what? A thousand. Or I'd move my, move my decimal over what direction? To the right. Okay. To the right. How many, how many spaces? These look like sixes. I'm sorry. Those are zeros. Um, but you move it over to the right, how many, how many zeros it is? One, two, three zeros. Okay? So it would be point. I got one. I move one, two, three. So it'd be zero, zero. Move my point there. Zero. Does that make sense now? I think that's where everybody can confused on the first one. Yeah. I picked up divided by 10 equals to divide by 1,000. Divide by 1,000, yes. Okay. All right, that was very good. I messed up, see? Glad you guys were paying attention. All right, let me erase this line again. Yeah, everyone's lost, I know. Let me, re let me bring everybody back. <laughs> All right, so I have 100 milliliters, and I want to turn it into liters, okay? I got a small number, and I want to make it large. So what do I do? I divide by 1,000. It's always 1,000. Yes, yeah, because we're going, we're changing. 1,000, okay? So, like you said, it's written in the, it, it's written, understood that it's 100.0. Zero zero zero. So now that I'm dividing this by 1,000, I'm going to move my decimal, how many zeros I have here? Three. 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 I'm going to move my decimal over one, two, three, right, which makes, so one, two, three, which makes point one, and I use my units here, right, point one liters, or one tenth, okay? That's the same as this here, going from, from a larger unit so a smaller unit, I multiply by a thousand, and I just move how many zeros I have. Okay? Does that make sense to everybody now? Sorry, I lost everyone in the first first portion. Okay. So hopefully, we kind of got the decimal thing out of the way. But understand that you just go by how many zeros you have, and you move it. I'll give you another example. Would be um, we can make it make it two hundred and fifty. MLs into liters, right? So what am I doing here? Moving the decimal to the left. So to the left, how many times? Three times. So I'm basically doing what? 
dividing by a thousand, right? So dividing by a thousand. So how it gets written is like this. It gets written as two five zero point zero, and then I just move my decimal, like you said, to the left. One, two, three, and it gets written as point two five liters. Because we don't gotta write the zero. We understood. I mean, I can write point two five zero liters, but that's stupid. Okay, we already understood the zeros there. And we know point two five is what as a percent? Quarter. 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 So. That's a quarter of a liter, okay? Does that make sense to everybody now? Yeah. Because right. once we understand this point, we'll move on to the real math. All right. Oops, we got to start the other slide. All right, so we just went over that. So again, it's the same thing when we go to weights. Right, if you have a larger unit, go to a smaller unit, but we use pounds here in America, so we're not going to be worrying about using grams and milligrams, things like that. It only comes down to actual medications. But again, those are already going to be in the units for you majority of the time. So if your, your medication comes ordered as 250 milligrams, you're going to give 250 milligrams, and it's going to be a concentration of vial is going to be 250 milligrams, and you don't have to worry about changing it back and forth to like grams to, to milligrams, majority of the time, okay? There are some instances where we have to change it from milligrams to mics or micrograms, okay? But even then, that's, that's, that's rare. All right, so now how do we turn pounds into, into kilos? Again, we can just divide the weight by 2.2, or we can make it even simpler for us. We'll just divide it by two and take away 10%. So this is where the decimals come into play again. All right, let's talk about weight. So give me a weight of some other matter what it is. 160. Huh? 160. 160. So I have a 160 pound patient. And my order comes in as I need to turn my weight into kilos, right? Because that's how my dose is ordered. And you turn to kilograms. Well, this is pretty simple. I divide by two. All right, what's 160 divided by two? 80. 80 is equal to 80. Now, what's 10% of 80? 80. 80. Eight. So, 72. I take away 10%, which is equal to 8. I just do 80, take away 8, which is equal to 72 kilograms. Boom. That simple. All right, that's 160 pounds. You can literally give me any pounds, and it's going to be, it's going to break it down like this every single time. All right. So do another one. Do um, 200 pounders. All right, into kilogram. Okay. First step: divide by two, which is what? 100. What's 10 percent of that? 10. Take away 10%, which is equal to 10. So 100, take away 10, is 90. Okay, this works for any weight. You can even go up to like 400, 500, it's still going to work the same way. All right. Can we so divide by 2.2 if we. You can divide by 2. Point, if you don't understand this, you can divide by 2.2. Um, I'll, I'll show you that way. I understand it. I just would rather just. That's fine. And then you have to realize if you're going to do it like that, you're going to do 2.2 divided by 200 pounds, right? We know the answer is 90. So instead of doing it this way, like, again, decimals suck, right? So let's just pretend that decimal's not even there, and we'll put it back up in the formula later. So it would just be 22 divided by what? Um, 20, if you guys remember long division, 22 can't go into 2, right? It can't go into 20 either, right? Well, that sucks ass, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. <laughs> now, what, I gotta go all the way to 200? How, how many times is 22 going to 200? Nine well, thankfully, we did the math prior to this, so yeah, nine times, right? Okay, cool. So, nine, which is equal to what? Now I gotta do 22 times nine. Anybody? 22 times nine. 
You see why we don't do this? 198? Yeah, let's grab my calculator out on scene with my bloody glove on. This is how we do it. Got my bloody glove on. We gotta put this up to call my wife earlier. So 2.2 times 9 equals 198. Cool. 198. Right? Which leaves me with what? 2? Okay. Now what? Crap, I got out of 0. Can I still do anything? Dang it. Got out of another 0. This makes what? The same place I was already at. This sucks, right? So it's really like 0 point, and it's going to be eventually going to be another 9 again. So it's really like 91 kilos, but you see how the 98, and it's going to keep repeating itself. It's going to be 2. Son of a crap. I got to keep doing this one. This is stupid. All right? I'm not knocking your way. Pretty much, I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm only saying it that way because this is gonna this is gonna be important at not not when I first get on shift, not after lunchtime, not after dinner time. This is gonna be important come four o'clock in the morning. I just ran I've already ran six calls and now my seventh call tonight is a friggin' pediatric code or it's gonna be a CHF or and I have to do dopamine on them and I have to give it in a in a weight based formula. Right? How many like the other way? A lot better, right? That's pretty much everyone raising their hand. Monique, I, I hear you. I hear out your complaint. No, I, if I you like doing again. your math that way, I'm not gonna knock you. And I'm, I'm I actually applaud you for doing it that way because if this takes a lot of effort and if that work makes sense to you, I'm not gonna change, reinvent the wheel for you. But for the other ones who don't understand the math or who have a hard time because. You know, I'm in a trade. I'm in a trade school, right? For a reason, because I wasn't really good at calculus and I couldn't make it to med school, right? Hey, okay, here I am. <laughs> cool. All right. This is a lot easier once you understand how to make the math it makes sense for you. Yes. Oh, I got a question because I understand both of them, but uh, for test purposes, let's say we take a test and like you just had it was 90.9, and then it says to round it, which would be your 91, and the other one was 90. Um, test question and answer bank has a 91 and a 90 because this it was on like one of the tests in the end of the chapter quiz and it was like a four and a three yeah. so that's where the only, I, I saw a little issue with that um here i'm not going to speak to what miss eggers will do because i'm not 100 percent sure you know i don't have her mind yet but odds are if you pick 91 over 90 we're going to look at the math Odds are you're probably going to have to write it out before formulas anyways, and if you can justify either way, then we're cool with that. It's going to be the same thing when we do scenario-based stuff. If you can justify, well, hey, man, the correct treatment was this. Why did you do that? If you can justify why you did the wrong treatment and it still worked out for you, then we're going to be golden, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, gotcha. Also, caveat to that, how much do I look like I weigh? Bring it on. 240. 240. 240. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, do I be really fat? One, two. 190. 145. 180. <laughs> Someone's getting cookies. Man. 170. Uh, 165. I'm, I'm, I'm 205. So, all right, 200 pounds. Doesn't really, um, doesn't matter. But guess what? How many of you guys worked in the service part of this? Nobody? I can wear a unicycle. All right, so we're not, we're not good calculators of, of weight. Year, you know what I mean? So, you know, if you if you put me at 170, thank you. We're good, right? But uh, maybe the maybe the pain medicine they're trying to give me is not going to work out too well. So, just understand that you know, little frail old grandma who is realistically all of like 100 pounds soaking wet, she's not going to be 150 pounds, right? Just like so just like so make my kilos make sense to me, right? We always make the math make sense for us. <coughs> Does anybody have any questions on, on this? So to answer your question, either way is acceptable. You're going to write out the formula anyway, and you're going to put it in there. Monique, sorry to put you down, but this makes sense for me at 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the morning when I'm, my brain can't make sentences. Okay, but if this, if this works for you, or excuse me, the other way works for you, the, the long decimals, that's fine. Just understand that you're not going to have a paper 
or something that you usually write on in that critical moment, you know what I mean? So you can, you're more than welcome if you have those smart watches like we all have to start calculating on there, but you understand you're going to start contaminating things. And I don't know about you, I don't want my phone contaminated with blood and feces or whatever else I might have touched prior to doing that. So, and this is going to be a time sensitive, time sensitive thing. Most of my drugs that I have to give weight based are respiratory wise and uh, pain management wise or blood pressure wise. So I don't have time to play around. All right. Temperature conversion. For those of you who work in the hospital, remember that. For those of you who aren't going to work in the hospital, that's. <coughs> I mean, it's important to understand, understand these things. Uh, Dr. Karen back there probably knows more about changing Fahrenheit and Celsius than I do, but I know in the pediatric world they use a lot of Celsius um, for temperatures. Don't know why. That's how you that's how you find that. All right. So we're given a drug order. <coughs> So the amount of drugs ordered by your physician, it's going to be expressed in these specific numbers. Micrograms, milligrams, or grams. Again, that's what all of our drugs are based in. And you're going to, he's going to give you the order and you're going to repeat it back to them. And then we'll start talking about um, actual calculations for that. So how do we calculate our med doses? So what is, we got to figure out a few things. We need to know give over have, over the concentration I have in my vial, all right? So, well, how do I know how much drug I have in my vial? So that's the amount of total weight in our amount of volume. So it's our amount of milligrams in our volume, okay? Let's go ahead and let's talk about that. So I have, five milligrams of some drug, and it's in one ml of fluid. Okay, so what's my concentration? This is pretty simple. Five to one. I have a five to one ratio, okay? So basically, since I have a five to one ratio, how many of you guys, you guys could kind of go with percentages a little bit? Quarter, half, yeah? Uh, what times, so what number? This is meds now, right? Yeah, we're talking about meds. Right. I should probably erase that X, because I'm going to write next. So what number times 5 equals 100? 20, right? Okay, so now I can take any kilo, or I can take any other amount of drug here, divide it by 5, and I'm going to get my concentration every time. This isn't important here, and just understand the concept of you have a five to one ratio. So if you need, if this was in a larger ML, you could easily get the five to one. Okay, you just twenty times by twenty percent. So my concentration is five to one. Now I have ten milligrams in one ML. What's my concentration there? Ten to one, ten to one right? So I can also ex express it. What if I needed? What if I needed, the doctor ordered, ordered me to give three milligrams of this, of this drug? 0 0.3. 0 0.3 what? In ounce, right? That's pretty simple, right? So the formula for this is this. It's give over how much I have times it by the mLs I have in my vial. So my give is, is pretty simple, right? My give is what? My give was point, or excuse me, my, my give was three milligrams, right? How much do I have in my vial total? Of milligrams. Ten. Ten. How many mLs do I have in there? Or right, times it by, sorry, times. One mL, which is equal to what? Three over ten, or for those of us who like decimals, point three. Does that make sense to everybody? Sorry. Really? <laughs> I will. I got you. So, if my order, wish I can change my color here. Let me let me change the color. That's a cool color. Here. 
Alright, so my order was for three milligrams of my drug. This is my prescription. Alright. So the doctor ordered three milligrams for me to give. Well, my my medication comes ten milligrams and one ml. So that's my concentration on my drug. So to make things simple for us, you know, we can make it dose over this times that, blah blah blah, and it gets kind of confusing. So I like to do it as give over how much did my how much was my order. So give over how much do I have times it by my ml. So the doctor ordered to give three milligrams. Okay, I have how many milligrams in my vial? Ten. ten. I times that. That's a ten there. I times that by how many mLs? One mL. Okay, which equals. I mean, I could do all the. I'll do all the fancy math for you. So three tenths is like saying point three, right? Okay. So that's what we go back to here. So that's how I got. That's how I got three tenths is equal to point three. So I get point three of an mL. All right. So it's pretty simple. Especially when we talk about 10, 10 to 1, I mean, each 0.1 of an ml equals 1 milligram of a drug. So that one was pretty pretty simple there. And that would be the amount of drug. Yeah, that would be the amount of drug we have to give. So it's one thing to understand that we need to give 3 milligrams, but how do I get 3 milligrams out of my vial? I can find out the order all day. Like the, I can find out the dose. That's the simple part, right? The harder part is, is doing what? Taking that vial and getting the amount of medication out of that vial, right? So the, the more important part is understanding that you need three mLs, right? Thank you. Point three mLs. Point three mLs. Thank you. Yes, maybe I lost you. You will get it. I mean, I don't. I don't know. If I lost you, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring you back in. Bro, we got till five o'clock. I gotta, well, I gotta stretch this out. So let me let me make this make sense for everyone. Eraser. So let's talk about. Uh, let me, get, let me get a drug in my head we'll figure it out. So I have 150 milligrams of amiodarone inside of a 3 ml vial. Okay, that's how it comes packaged from the manufacturer. I have 150 milligrams in the 3 mLs. Now, pretty much all of us can take the con figure out the concentration, right? That's pretty simple. I just take 150 and I divide that by 3 mLs. So what's 150 divided by 3? 50, right? So now I know that I, my concentration is 50 milligrams per 1 mL. Okay? With me so far? All right, cool. So that's fairly, that's pretty much the simple part. And now I got the same med. Doctor, I got 150 milligrams in 3 mLs. And the doctor says, all right, I need you to give your Rx, your prescription, is 75 milligrams. That's how, much I want, that's how much I want you to give. Okay? Now, how do we figure out, how do we get this to that? How do we get 150 into 75? Over, uh, it's it's basically just divided by two, right? That's cool. I can figure out that I need to divide that by two, right? Not that's the easy part. Now, how many mLs I draw on that vial in order to give that particular medication? 1.5. Well, yeah, it's 1.5 because if I divide if I divided this by what I divided by two, and I divide this by two, okay, which would equal should equal, uh, so 3 divided by 2 is 1.5 mLs. So yeah, that's the easy part. Again, that's, this, was, this was give over half by the total mLs, right? Where, where does the 
75 was your prescription. That's how much you were ordered to give. Okay. Okay. So it's not too bad when we when we can easily figure out the math like this. But for those of you who really need to know the formula, it's always going to be give over half. So I need to give 75, and I have 150. Okay. I times that by my MLs. Yes, three minutes. Thank you. I'm glad somebody's paying attention. All right. So now we see how, how we get it. So that's basically one over two times three. Yes? That did not make sense there for you? So, DJL, right? All right. No? All right, DJ, my bad, man. I'm, I'm here for you. I don't want to. I said, this is my first time really interacting with you guys. Um, so, you understand why it's more important to figure out the MLs versus the actual dose? Because we have. I can give you. I can give you the amiodarone dose right now. Or the, excuse me, the. Uh, I'll give you the dopamine right now. So, here's, a, here's an actual dose of dopamine. 2 to 20 micrograms per kilogram per minute. Well, dang, man, that's a lot of stuff, right? So we got to know a few things. You got to know how much we want to give, what the actual order is. So this is the order part. Now I got to figure out how much my patient weighs in kilos, and of course everyone's pounds in America. And I got to figure out my time, or how long I want to give it for. So if the, do the prescription for you was five mics per kilo per minute, all right, and I have, I have that 175 pound patient, I'm gonna make it 180 because I like round numbers. All right, so now I gotta do a few things here, right? I gotta turn this to kilos, I gotta figure out this times the kilos, and that gives me my dose. So 180, let me change my pen here so we can all see what I'm doing. 180 divided by 2 is what? 90, 90 take away 10%, which is 9, right? Which is 81. So that's fine and dandy, right? I found out my kilos. Now I got to do 5 times 81. That equals what? Mm -hmm. So let's let make another slide here so we can see it. 405. Okay. 405. Yeah, 405, right? right. Give me a new slide. So 5 times 81. Again, I like it doing it this way. So that's 5. This is 40, right? 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 8 is 40, so 405. Oh, okay, cool. I gotta get 405 micrograms per minute. Well, how many mLs is that? That sucks, right? And if I let anybody have to give it over a minute, what about I get 405 micrograms and then my, my liters, my milliliters <coughs> were, were different? So now, do you understand why it's more important to know the mLs versus how to get the dose? This is where that makes sense at. Okay. Right. Any questions so far? No. Not any questions. All right. So we just kind of went over this, right? Desired dose, give over concentration of drug I have on hand, which is drug on hand, which is have, and then the times the volume. There we go. We just talked about weight base, right? Some meds are weight base in kilos, so we just gotta add an extra step. You gotta do the milligrams times the kilos. Just gotta add, do the weight first. And that's why we, we make the weight make sense for us. Like, yeah, I weigh 205 pounds, moving that into kilos is gonna be like 93 kilos. Well, I mean, 93 times something is a lot harder than 90 times something, right? Okay. So, again, we're not service performers. You know.
make make the math make sense for you. Yes. The formula calls that give over half times the amount. That's just your that's just your function. That's dose. your dose. Your normal dose. Normal dose. All right. So now we're going to talk about infusions. So this is the volume times the mLs. Over your infusion will give me drips per minute. So I know, have you guys seen that GTT before? Do right, you guys know what it means? Drops. Drops? Okay, cool. Do you understand what that means? No. No, no. alright, cool. i to make it make sense then. <coughs> This is how I calculate my flow rate. Again, it's kind of it's kind of going to be the same way. Give over half times my mLs, but it's going to be slightly different because we got to add in my drop set, and I got to add in over how long. Let me know whenever you guys are done, so I can. So the important part to remember here when we're doing drop sets is to make the units match. What I mean by that is you need to have the, uh, you got to change your concentration. So if your drug is in milligrams and the order is in micrograms, you have to change your milligrams into micrograms. Does that make sense? Okay. So it's all about mat pairing those things. And that's why it's important to understand the first part of getting the milligrams and the micrograms or changing the milliliters into liters for that deal, right? So let's talk about the drip sets. <coughs> so it's going to be, majority of the time your drip sets are, are what? What are your two drip sets you have? Like micro and macro. macro. Yeah, ma micro, right? Okay. Which is how many drops? So 60 GTTS, and then macro is what? 10. Macro is 10. Sometimes you got them to 20 drops, okay? All right, they're all, they're all ranging there. How do you know one's what over what? How do you know if you, when you grab your drop set out to spike your bag, which one's which? So the micro set will have a, a very thin metal dropper in it, and the macro set will have a very large plastic one in there. That's how you can tell. So macro meaning large, and micro meaning small, right? So what does all that mean? What's what's this mean? What's 60 drops, and what's 10, 20 drops? All right. So if I have a macro set, basically what it's saying is I have, once I get 10 drops, I equal 1 ml. Okay? So once 10 drops go through my fluid bag, I make 10 mLs. I make, excuse me, 1 ml. See, I would have tripped over your wire here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, oh okay. like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right, so this is just for camera purposes. I don't know if they can see it or not. But once 10 drops go through this chamber here, if this was a 10 drop set, it would make 1 ml. That means 1 ml went from here all the way through my line and out to the patient into the IV. That's an important concept we're going to talk about here in a second. So the same with 60 drops. I have my 60 drop set, it's going to take 60 drips to go through this chamber to make one ml. Which one do you think is easier for time? 60 or 10? 60. Because time is in what? 60s. Seconds, 60 seconds, one minute, 60 minutes, one hour. Yeah? It's kind of making sense now? Yeah. For a lot of you have seen the light bulb click. And like, oh, That's, that should also be another uh, clue to you guys once we get on scene is if I have to give a medication because their blood pressure is low or whatever, I'm not going to, if your EMT grabs a micro drip set or the macro, you slap them across the head and you tell them to go get a micro, okay? You need to use the micro sets for anything infusion-wise, just because it makes sense with the time. 
Macros are for what? Medication. Macro is what? Large. <laughs> I have to give large fluids because I have a trauma patient who's lo losing blood, right? Large volume, large drops. Small volume, small drops. Right? Is that hard to, a concept to understand? No, right? Now that made it make sense for everybody. That's why I try to make things paramedic proof and fireman proof because we're a bunch of idiots. And we are, I mean, you should see us at work. All right, so let's talk about how to, let's talk about that uh, fusion set. So most of your orders will come as micrograms per kilogram per minute. And that's gonna be all over your drop set. Oops, that's supposed to be a G. Actually, I messed up. Let me reverse that. That's not how it's supposed to be. Eraser. So again, we're talking about that dopamine patient, all right? The dose I told you was 2 to 20. The doctor orders five mics for you. So you have five mics was the order. Your patient weighs 80 kilos, okay? And you have a 60 drop set, okay? And you're going to divide that all by your concentration of your drug. Okay? So this is going to be concentration. What? Is that 80 kilograms? Mm-hmm. I should write 80, huh? That makes sense, right? Sorry. So, 5 mics times 80 kilos times 60 all over my concentration in my vial. Or actually what we do with dopamine is we put it, we put it into a bag. Okay? So, <clears throat> dopamine comes packaged in 400 milligrams. Oh man, that sucks. My dose, my dose of my vials in milligrams, and I gotta change it to what? Micrograms. Dang. All right. And for purposes that I'm just gonna tell you later on, we're just gonna put it in a 250 bag. Okay. The reason why we put it in a 250 bag is to give us a certain concentration that we need. With dopamine, we want to put it in an 800 concentration or a 1.6 milligram concentration or 1,600 mics. Okay. I know I just probably lost everybody there. Right. <laughs> and mind blown. Very cool. So understand that it needs to be either in 800 or it needs to be in 1,600. Okay. Another way of saying 1,600 mics is 1 1.6 milligrams, right? 1.6 milligrams. I need to make this into mics. What do I do? Times it by 1,000, right? So I just move my decimal over how many places? Three. Three. Good. One, two, three, which is going to be 1,600. Okay? So far, so good? No, no. What were you talking about? She learned 50. Extremely lost. So I need to make, I'm saying 1.6 milligrams is this equal to 1,600 mics. That's all I'm talking about so far. Okay. That makes sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. 1.6 milligrams is equal to 1,600 mics. That's just the or it needs to either come in 800 milligrams, 800 micrograms. Sorry, getting Kathy's on board. Same thing, same thing. So 800 micrograms or it needs to be in 1,600 micrograms. I'm just giving you another way to say 1,600 micrograms. I'm trying to make make you guys think math. Okay. So another way of saying 1,600 mics is. 1.6 milligrams, which you might see somewhere because someone hates, hates you guys as a medical director. <laughs> no names. All right. So how do we how do we figure out that um, how do we figure out that 400? How do we figure out the concentration of 400 milligrams and 250 mLs? How do how do we know what the concentration is here? It's pretty simple, just divide, okay? So it'd be 250 into 400. 
Well, we know 250 goes into 400 at least once, right? Right. So that would be 250. We take away what? All that, which makes what left over? 150. Which makes 150. Bring a zero. Bring another zero. 250 goes into 1500. How many times? Six. Okay. This is going to be equal to 1600 mics. Okay. So 1.6. Since 400 is in milligrams, let me put that right there for you. Since 400 is in milligrams, it would be 1.6 milligrams, but our medication is given in what? Mics. So that's why it's 1600. Okay? So whenever you're mixing dopamine or you're using, a, you're dividing a small number into a larger number, understand you're going to get a larger number as your answer. Right? If I did 400 milligrams into a 500 ml bag, it would be 800, right? Because I got a larger number, smaller number going into a larger volume. No? No. 800 micrograms. 800 micrograms, yes. Okay. Okay. So, let me change it up. So I have 400 milligrams into a 500 ml bag. Right? Equals what? I mean, we just do the math here. It equals four fifths, which is what? Eighty percent, or what? Eight hundred micrograms, or point eight milligrams. Okay. Right? See that? So by whenever you're mixing dopamine, or it, really this doesn't matter for dopamine. I just say dopamine because it's an easier drug for us to understand once you guys move on. Don't worry. Once you understand this basis, I'm going to make it make so much more sense how you say it. Okay. Oh, how many minutes do you have a break, sir? Uh, be back. What time to say? Be back at 25. Have an example of a micro and a macro chip so we can see the difference? Yes. 
isn't what we use in China. This is like a, uh, a test one. But just understand that this will, this, see how it says 60 here? This one will probably say 20 on the But there's the chamber. I see. That's how you're going to do it. But this, we always ferment infusions. Always. Yes, I'm going to give something over time. And by, by time, I mean anything more than like two minutes. Because if you read the book, the book's like, give this matter over two minutes. Like, I'm not going to sit there and push one and then I'll go over three to two minutes. I'm going to give it probably 30 seconds to a minute. It's still going to be exciting. As long as I'm not seeing adverse effects. Like, if you push fentanyl too fast, you cause chest rigidity. Yeah. So that's why I say push it slowly over two minutes. But guess what? The guy's not breathing. So I need to give it to him a little bit faster than two minutes. Yeah, okay. But if I'm going to give anything over an amount of time, like five, ten, more minutes than that, this is going to use it. So for, like, the volume, mm -hmm. like you said, the doctor said he'd give you five micrograms. So if they were like, okay, give two micrograms, you can change up to five for two, it'd be two, you have to use the same thing. You just plug in the dose that you want. Okay, so it's the same. Okay. So how is that work? This is right. So I know I'm a little ahead of myself here, but like give it to They were like, okay, give it to me. You're up. Give it to me. Like, you're actually insane. I'm talking about the number. It only works for five. Yes, what I'm doing. Okay. They usually will increase it. So most most systems they start at five. If it doesn't work, they usually double it. If it doesn't work, they double it again. That's why it's like ten. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you times five by two, right? They've got to double it again because the book is stuck. So how are the pounds like with the pounds method? You just double the drops again, or okay? But just understand. If you actually adopt the formula the correct way, mm -hmm. you're going to be off by a few drops. Okay. Alright, sounds good. Thank you. But what's the No, I get it. teach this way first. Well, that's what I was asking about like, scenarios too. Like, they're going to make us pull out of Is that if you're giving a leader? I, I apologize. Yeah, I you, you, this is if you're going to give a volume over amount of time. Odds are, if I'm going to give a liter to somebody, I'm just holding that thing wide open and bolting them because I need to give them fluids. Right? But how did you do your street math? So you take their weight, 250. Drop, 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 the, the, drop the last number. We got, so they could be 255 pounds. You just drop the last number, take away two, and then that's going to give your drops per minute for a five mic set. Understand that five mics. Okay. And if and the question was brought up, I'll I'll, I'll uh, reiterate this when they all come back. But if my that's where five mics. If I gotta give ten mics, I'm just gonna double my drops. Okay. That's mics per kilo. Yes. It's always gonna be in per kilo. But the the, fan, the nice thing about that is that you don't figure out the kilo because you're just you're just using pounds. You're taking what you're already used to, dividing in half already. Someone figured out that shortcut way and it works every single time, up to like you know, 300 pounds or so. You'll be off by maybe a drop or two. So, I'm going to bring it up. So does it make you feel better that I don't know either? <laughs> I, this is going to be a off the basis thing. So the pounds method. So I have a patient who weighs 200 pounds. And my dose, my dose of dopamine is five mics. Five mics per minute. It's per kilo per minute. So let me just let me write out simply for example. So I'm going to take my pounds, right, drop this number, take away 2, which makes 20 drops 
for a minute. Okay, this is for five mics. So, now let's take 220 and make it into pounds, or kilos. So that would be what, 100 kilos is 220? Yes? No? Because 220 divided by 2.2 is 100? So if I did 5 times 100 times 60 divided by 1,600, let's do that out. So, we should be pulling them out, but like, <laughs> moving the monitors to the adventure. So what's 60 times 5? I didn't even realize they were all right. Time's out by my kilos, right? Is that two kilos yet? Right? So now I gotta do this. Now what's that? Look, now, now you see how this is this is this sucks? That's why we can make the 1.6. Or we can make it 16 and move my things in later. Because 16 is a lot easier to put in, right? And how much? 18.75 or? Because you can't get three quarters of a drop unless you're bringing. You got so much caffeine on board, you can see that drop there, right? 19 drops. I'm only off by what? That can I kill my patient? And that is only, but that is only if you're using your dopamine mix 1600. Yes, that's only 1600. So I'm going to reiterate that. Okay, because that's where I was going. Like, like it, it doesn't work if you're trying to. Okay. Got and, we, and, okay, and there's we'll a clock method to go away. So I'm going to go away. That is total sense, but you have to ensure that your dopamine is mixed that way. Because you we will like always, but we will all, if it's pre-mixed, it comes that way, but we will always make it that way because, because that that's just what so much easier. Because that isn't what I do. That's what I'm saying. So it's 1,600 It's 400 and 250. It'll be 1,600. Do you want to that word? But we don't we don't like the internet and then it's just like the waste of the of the body. I have a full five minutes. If my 250 bag costs for a dollar a bag, I got my 500 bag costs for five dollars. What do you got? I got it. Can you multitask? Missing one <laughs> 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 Are you talking about money now? Where does money play in those? <laughs> oh, that's for, for bags. Oh, like, <laughs> you know, if you're an EMS system, you're not going to buy a five, uh, 500 ml bag. You're going to do the same thing with a 250 ml bag. Okay. It's just because you're making. It's going to A, make your math easier on your paramedics in the system. It's going to make your math, um, it's going to make your system more efficient. Because what happens when we get to the hospital anyways? Just throw it on the board. They never do. Is that for the quiz? Yeah. Then you have yeah, they just got to look at the situation. Is that for 14? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Stop taking off. Stop pacing. Stop pacing. Stop pacing. Every time. Oh, I'm barely hanging on right now. Well, I'm bagging. I'm like, yeah, just put the bag. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The only film is also, I don't even know what you need to tell me. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
we have a we have a hand tub in here in Pinellas County, which all you gotta do is find out how old the kid is, and it tells you immediately. You put them to that book, it tells you exactly your dose, exactly how many milligrams you're gonna give, or whatever the concentration happens to be in, and it gives you the exact amounts to go out of. We have this length-based tape called the Groslow tape. You start this little arrow here, you start at the head, you measure out where their feet land. She lands in the white zone. So all the drug calculations will be on that in the white area right there. Majority, if not, excuse me, all of your drugs on kids will be uh, weight-based. All right, so it's important that we start, that we start getting used to knowing how to start changing drugs into whatever. There's many little cheat sheets for us. That's the bottom line saying, you must fill guides, tables. There's a bunch of apps out there, okay? I'm not saying you can't use your phone on scene. I'm just saying for the math reasons, you really have to, okay? But for other things, you might need to. All right, so what is an enteral medication? Here's right there, right? There's multiple classes of drugs. There's enteral route, there's paraenteral, right? But enteral means anything that's going to be given through the digestive system or the intestinal tracts, right? And those include all right here. All these things right here. So your pills, what med, what med do we have in, as we're going to give uh, in Terrell? Aspirin. Aspirin, right? Okay. That's really the only drug that we have that we're going to give by mouth, okay? Other than um, sublingual Zofran, but that just dissolves. It actually doesn't go into the GI tract. Okay. Any questions on that? If you ever say, I'm going to give something entirely, Gonna laugh at you on the scene. Mm -hmm. Say good job knowing that, but don't that play on. <laughs> so oral meds, they have slow absorption rates because why? Because they gotta go through the digestive system, right? What also happens? Why are they in the higher concentrate, higher milligrams versus something IV? So it gets broken down. By what? And gets filtered by the liver, right? The kidneys. So it has to be at a higher dose. So for your patients that you might see that they're on 90 milligrams of morphine, they're probably not getting 90 milligrams of morphine. They're probably just getting about 10, but all of it gets absorbed. And that's just arbitrary number. Don't quote me. I'm just saying it's broken down. So don't say, don't think that your patient is actually in a high dose. Remember, we always got to do the six rights. You guys have that little cheat sheet on the back of your thing. You do the whole med check. Make sure we're doing that. It says there's ten rights here. Does anyone know the ten rights? No. Does anyone know the six? Six, six right dose. Patient dose, right time. So right patient, right dose, right time, right, right med. medication, right, right route. Right documentation. There's probably like two other ones that you can even think of, but that's where we cross check the things, okay? That's a that's a one big thing that you guys will have drilled into your heads here. That little cross check. You guys already have remember that, try to. Anytime we give a med in scenario world, make sure you're actually doing that. So if you two are together and you're gonna give albuterol for whatever reason, make sure you go to her and give her the med so she can see it. This is what it says it is. Right? If not, I'm sure there'll be a disciplinary thing. Because Miss Eggers is key on that, and so are some of the other instructors. All right, oral meds. What does the patient have to have intact in order to give a medication? Yeah, oral medication. Airway, right? So if they can't, if they're not conscious, do we give them the drug? No. no. It's like shoving the oral glucose down someone who's not awake, right? So if you can, try to give them something with water, but understand that our aspirin is what? Chewable. It's chewable, so they really don't need to have water, they just gotta chew it up. Oh, 
obviously, this is where it comes to the right documentation. Right? Make sure we always reassess the patient. Every time we give a medication, no matter what it is, we're always reassessing. So that's blood pressure, that's their mental status, that's their ABCs, all over again. Right? You guys just constantly do that anyways, right? When you talk to somebody, hey man, how you feeling? He starts, then you know the ABCs are intact, right? If he tells you his pain's gotten better than what? You should probably document that. The patient's pain went from whatever to better, right? So we have OG tube, NG tube. We usually don't give anything down those EMS wise. Um, when do we do an OG tube? Mm -hmm. Pressure in the stomach. Yep. We, we start seeing inflation in the stomach, right? Really more when we start bagging and my diaphragm starts pushing up on my lungs and I can't get a good squeeze, right? Because of my stomach pushing up my diaphragm. So we use it for that. Otherwise, we usually don't get meds down it. You will see that in the hospital a lot of times with uh, the, uh, what's that stuff you got to do with the EMT? Activate charcoal? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the same with the, uh, the nasal stuff. Remember how do you guys remember how to measure those things? OG tubes, NG tubes. You know how to measure them? From the not all at once. the mouth to the around the ear. So OG tube from the mouth yeah. around the ear to where? Xiphoid process. That's the top of the stomach. And for NG tube is what? Nose around the ear, same place, right? This allows the uh, medicines to be absorbed rapidly because it's going right to what? Right to my, uh, oh, that's rectally. <laughs> OG tube allows, allows it to be uh, rapid as well because why? The stomach's lined with a bunch of um, capillaries, right? So you have easily administration right to the stomach, right to the circulatory system. Next one's rectal administration. What drug do we usually give rectally? Valium. Valium, okay. Odds are your patient will, will have that or someone, or your patient won't give it to you because they're seizing one. So someone who's a caregiver of that patient will probably end up giving you the rectal value. All right. We have other ways besides rectally in this county. We usually give it nasally. But I mean, if it's already there for you, the patient, the mom gives it to you, go ahead and just give it rectally, okay? Easy, easily absorbed again. Same reason why the stomach is easily absorbed in. It's because of all the capillaries, all the arteries and stuff like that, right? Just don't be afraid to do it. I mean, you know, it sucks. I've only had to do it once or twice. But these are really going to be on your special case kids. Dr. Cameron, is that really more correct? Yeah. Correctly? All right, so these will be like your special needs guys. Like, I don't know about you, but my kid has special needs, my son. I have a little soft spot for that, so I don't want, I mean, for those of you who don't have kids, it's kind of hard to explain to you, but we don't want nothing to happen to these little guys, they're, they're, their life hasn't even started yet, so we're going to do whatever we can for these guys, so especially the ones that have mental retardation and developmental issues. All right. It says to lubricate, most of the times your, your, um, your rectal meds will already have that um, lube already on it when you take, take it out of the package. If not, you can use uh, use the KY jelly that we use for the NG tubes or OG tubes, right? The majority of the time, you're going to go off of what the, your standing orders are. So there will probably be something in your standing orders for uh, rectal doses. Um, if there's any question on any orders, so your mom, the mom hands you the vial and your medication for Valium and the, where you work at says you can only get 50 or 5 milligrams, Mom's like, no, you gotta get 10 milligrams. Get on med control immediately. Figure out the, figure out what they want you to do, okay? Let the doctor who makes six figures figure that out for you, all right? Um, again, you still, even though the patient's hand you a vial, the majority of times they are pre-filled, make sure to look at the packaging, all right? That goes back to the cross-check, looking at the meds to make sure you have your concentrations, all right? Because if the doctor says, hey, only give five, and it comes in a, your concentration from two to one. You need to figure out how many ml's you got to get, okay? Any questions on this? I mean, I really don't. You just, you just push it and go. There's not really much else to tell.
tell you about it. I'd love to give you more about rectal stuff. Trust me. Majority of time, this says I can tell me something clear down. If you're giving something rectally, your patient's usually critical, so they're not going to be talking. Again, always monitor your patient. <clears throat> All right, so then we, we got the enteral route, which is anything through the GI tract, right? So the parenteral route is what? Anything else but? It says it right there. So that includes what? IV, IO, IM. Right, sublingual. So this goes right to the uh, circulatory system. So some things you'll need. Syringe. You're going to need uh, to have your uh, fill needle. What's important to know about your syringes? Besides, uh, you got to go to all these little fine things. Yeah. Yes? So this is in... This is a how many ml syringe? Ten. What are each one of these little in lines in between the one? How many? Point two, right? Because there's there's how many little lines? There's one, two, three, four, five. There's five little lines between each one, so it's point two. Okay. So with that being said, if you only had to give three mls, would you grab a ten ml syringe or would you grab a three ml syringe? Three, three ml syringe, right? So it's important to look at your vial. I know it sounds stupid, but this mistake has happened a lot of times. All right? If the vial comes in 5 mLs, do not grab a 20 mL syringe. Just grab the syringe that you're going to need. It should be 5 mLs. Okay? And then that's what we get down into here. I mean, if you had a 20 mL syringe and I told you you only need to give you know, 1.4 mLs, how are you going to get 1.4 if you, if you didn't know what the numbers are? And if I told you how to give, if you use this 20 ml syringe and I told you how to give those 1.4 mls over three minutes, would you be able to do that? Yeah. Maybe. And then you hit that, that driver to tell you hit a bump. You slam the rest of that medication in. You know, I gave him over 10 seconds. Now what? Whoops. All right, so just, that's why it's important to grab the right size syringe. All right, so make, remember, we got to grab a needle, get it out. Have you guys taken out meds yet from vials? No. no. So the one important thing to remember that's popping out on here, uh, if this one is doubled, they have larger the gauge sizes, it doesn't really matter what size gauge you use to draw out the medication. Just understand that the needle needs to be inside the liquid, or else you're just going to draw out air. You laugh, Kevin, but how many of you have seen season medics and they're like, I can't get the med out, and it's because of that reason right there. All right, so here's some different types of packagings of uh, the vials we use. These are ampules. Um, you break the glass container here, there's a little perforation. You're gonna need to use a filter, filter straw needle with these ones because they're, the glass will fall down, can fall down into the liquid while you're pulling it out. All right, we don't want glass going into the patient. Here's, a, here's an example of knowing your uh, concentration. So we have 150 milligrams in the three amounts. Thankfully, this nice medication gave us the concentration for us. And we have the trade name, and we have the generic name. The majority of the time, we use a lot of the generic names, so it's important on both of those. So does that make sense earlier about the 75 and the how many amounts? So that's, this is the medication we use. Alright, we have vials. So again, first down for you. It tells you it's 0.5 grams in ml. Per ml. So how many milligrams is that? 0.5 grams. How many? 0.5 grams into one ml. 500 milligrams, right? So that's important to understand if your dose was lower than a gram. You need to figure out how to get that out, right? And then that also down here it says point or 4.06 mil equivalents. What's that? It's just telling you that in this vial, 4.6 equivalents of magnesium are per the amount. 
it's just arbitrary, but just understand that some of your meds will come packaged like that, or your dose will be in milliequivalents, and you have to figure out how to get that out. Um, the only really med we have in milliequivalents is sodium bicarb. So if your dose is in milligrams for mag, or excuse me, your dose is in grams for mag, and you look at the milliequivalents, you can see how that can confuse you. So you need to make sure you're looking at the right concentration of the, the drug you're getting out, okay? There's a lot of a lot of things to label there. Any questions so far? And then, then you got your give over half times ml, and it's ten ml. So you see that see how it comes back. Alright, there's more vials. This one's a, a mixed vial. This is actually solumedrol. You push the plunger down here. That little copper comes out liquid in this chamber comes down to here, you mix it up, and then you draw it out. Unfortunately, your needle's not long enough to make it from here all the way down to the bottom, so you have to turn the vial upside down to make it to go back into here. Now the only complication with this, this is the stopper goes into here. The stopper can sometimes come back into this area. You won't get all the liquid out, so make sure you jiggle it around. Again, if they turn this label around, it would say that there's two mLs in it. So if you're drawing out and you need to get the entire two mLs out, and you only got 1.5 mLs, you're gonna need to jig around the vial again and make sure you get all the liquid out. Any questions on this one? No. Right, a lot of our drugs that we use come pre-packaged because we like things that are simple for us. Right? So this comes pre-packaged here. And it comes in something like this. This one's already put together for you. This one, you have to pop off the yellow, yellow tops and screw them into each other. Okay, again, the boxes will give you the concentrations as well as the vials here. Okay, so you look at this, it says in a card, it comes with two, milli two milligrams and two mLs. So what's your concentration per mL? Three milligrams. Three? I know it's stupid, I'm just going over stuff. And you can break it down here in this little, if you could see it, it's in parentheses, it gives you the uh, actual concentration for a metal. Same here with your, your atropine. This is a 10 ml vial. It gives you one milligram, is in this whole 10 mLs, so it gives you 0.1 milligrams per ml. So if your dose of atropine was 0.5 milligrams, how many mLs of that syringe do you have to push out? Five. Five. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody? If I have to give 0.5 milligrams, and I have 0.1 milligram in one ml, I just take both of those and times it by five. 0.1 times five is 0.5, and if one ml times five is five ml, right? Any questions on those? Uh, one more thing about these ones. These ones are actually sharp here. Uh, make sure this one actually makes sure the sharp spin because this one actually happens to be a needle here, but the ones we have are lure locks. But there is a needle between here and here that uh, punctures this um, loose syringe. So make sure you take care of that sharp. Uh, these are called carpet jets right here. These are your single dose. They're already getting they're pre filled for us. I mean, now we just got to figure out how it comes, comes packaged. This usually comes packaged as 10 milligrams and two mLs. Again, how many per mL is that? Five to one. See, so I kind of scared you guys earlier with thinking the numbers are gonna be hard, but the numbers are really easy for us, right? Sometimes it's broken. We'll, we'll go over how to package those and take them out once we get down to our meds. <laughs> Those pressors. This is basically a medication that we need to give a one-time single dose of to get someone's pressure up while we're while we're making a, a drip set. We don't have any of these anywhere. I haven't seen any of these used anywhere around our area. So if you see it, it's just basically a small bolus. And again, a bolus is just a single-time dose of the medicine.
or a single time dose of fluid. Okay? You don't let bolus kind of scare you with some of these words. Make it make it more difficult than it has to be. Alright, so we have intradermal. Again, we have we have um, needle sizes that range in 25 to I think like 20, 20 gauges that we use for um, intramuscular. Again, those need to go 90 degrees flush with the, with the skin. All right. How do you avoid, how do you know you hit a blood vessel when you start to avoid blood vessels? What should you do once you put the needle into the intramuscular? Draw back a little bit, right? If you see blood, what happened? Just do an IV. <laughs> take it out. You really did just do an IV. So take it out, put it into the muscle because it absorbs differently if it went IV versus intramuscular, okay? So if you ever draw back blood in the IM, put it into, just move it over slightly. Because it has the slow absorption rate. If we put that, if you put that medicine into the IV, it might not, might be too much of a dose versus intravenous route, okay? You have to draw that back out or can you just adjust it from? Uh, just pull it out and just move it over. Okay. Okay. Yeah, don't even attempt to try to just, like, I'm gonna push Angle. past it, right? Yeah, just, right. please just take it out. Just, you don't want the risk that it's still in there, right? Yeah. All right, again, follow your six rights when you give medicine to IM. <coughs> Any questions on that? Cleanse the area aseptically, push it in, yada, 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 six mm -hmm. rights, cross check. Circles. Yes, circles, outside. Clean the area, pull the skin taut. What's why do we have pull the skin taut? Hold the site in place. Hold the site in place. Hold the site in place for you, right? And you'll notice on your uh, elderly people, they really have a lot of extra skin. Or your people who are uh, obese, they have a lot of extra skin there. So let's keep it down tight, please. Move the needle. Yeah. Just start this. So sub-Q, we really don't do too many sub-Q things here. Um, there are a couple meds out there like um, Degrajon. Uh, no, excuse me, Tributaline. Tributaline is one that we give uh, sub-Q. And here's a little site you can do it. Your upper arms, a lot of people like to do the forearms. You gotta do your PPD, right? That's, that's subcutaneously. Right? It's just right into the fat layer, it's actually not into the muscle. Um, there's a lot of other meds we give too, um, abdomen, insulin happened to be one of them, and um, Levaquin, which is a blood thinner, right, is another one. But that's really more in the hospital route. So if you happen to work in the hospital as a medic and they let you do those things, that's how you do it. Again, you're gonna clean the site like normally, 45 degree angle, you're into the sub tissue, you're not actually into the muscle. Exercise. Any questions on I am or sub Q? What if you accidentally like you can't see inside? Would you put it in the muscle? It's not gonna. You're gonna have. It's usually the same concentration as your I am, so you're not gonna have that high dose like you would do if you put it into the vein, right? And the reason why you go at a 45 degree angle is because you're going to actually kind of tip the skin up. Have you ever watched you do your PPD before? No. Okay, don't like needles. Need one. You actually kind of go in and watch them tip the skin up and it stays away from the muscle. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's double, it's double up when you do sub Q for that reason. Uh, here's your IM. Okay. Potential damage to nerves, why? Hit a nerve. Hit a nerve, right? They start losing that feeling, just move it over. Right. Did she document any complications? You guys know what these are? These are your common IM sites. No? That's cool. Yeah. Here do I. <laughs> I just know that we use it a lot of the deltoid, which is going to be your outside fat here. Um, you know, if you want to be the gluteus maximus, that's cool, but most patients aren't going to allow you to take their pants down. Um, what's the one spot we do IM though for you common? Apply. Apply, right? So that's really for what job? Epi, right? 
Sorry, I'll take a pants out. IV bolus medication, remember, bolus is just saying that it's just a simple amount of, a little bit amount of drug over a quick amount of time, okay? So don't let bolus freak you out. We have needleless systems here in the county and pretty much everywhere else because people are getting stuck. And it's just a single, remember, uh, bolus is just a single dose. Some of them are given rapidly, such as denosine, and the other ones are given slowly, such as your pain medications, all right? Because we, we do them too fast, it usually gives you a counter effect of what you want. Any questions on that? Nope. Next slide is going to tell you how to do it. And if you have a, if you already have an IV in place, you're going to clean off that hub site on your uh, your pigtail. Or realistically, every time you give a medication, you should have a drip set going. Okay, and you're just going to clean off the uh, the hub port here with alcohol. Okay. And then put the medication. Same thing as all the other slides. Six rights, cross check, blah blah blah. Let's move past this. Any questions on how to draw it out through the saline lock? The only reason why we don't give drugs through the saline lock is because of the one ml example I gave you earlier. Remember that pigtail is one ml. <clears throat> We give a, a common drug we give just with the IV in place itself is solumadrol and Zofran. It comes packaged, Zofran, four milligrams and two amounts. A lot of people don't want to hang a bag on Zofran just because blood pressure is good, they don't really have any other complaints other than nausea, we're just going to give them something for their nausea. So what happens when you push that, that two mLs through that, through that J-loop, through that pigtail? One still sitting there? Yeah, one ml is still sitting in the loop. Did you give them all four milligrams? No. No. So now you got to flush it. Well, you just gave half of the medication rapidly because you just slammed it in. And then what? What, what do we do commonly when we put a flush on a, on a loop? We just flush it, right? Because that's what we are just commonly used to doing. So that to, to eliminate that, that's why we use a bag. Okay? Because you have to get that one ml, the extra one ml that you had to push through the saline lock over two minutes. It's pretty hard to do, right? With a 10 ml syringe, you get one ml. Now, if you had a one ml syringe, it would be different, but a 10 ml syringe takes a good little practice. So always get in the habit, no matter what, you give a drug IV in a bag, okay? Again, we talked about this, clean the port, put the needle in, flush it. Remember, you don't have to flush it if you're giving it through the saline lock. Just open your bag up back to how you want it. Adding an IV, adding fluids to the bag. Understand it comes with that blue port that's right here. And then we have the, this other one that's right here. Anytime we give a med in the bag, again, we're going to do the cross check. Then we're changing it. We're going to, have to now figure out the concentration of the drug. Okay. So if we put, for the sake of argument, if we put a thousand milligrams of a drug in here in a thousand ml bag, what's my concentration? A one to one. A one, one to one, right? So we'll now need to add a med medication add label. That medication add label will need to say, this is the drug I put in. This is my concentration. This is the total dose. Okay. Let's take stop uh, confusion because. IV, uh, IV meds are what? They're clear. This bag is clear. So if I just put something in here and I didn't know it, or someone put it in there and I didn't know it, what could happen to my patient? Potential serious side effects, right? So make sure you always label these things immediately. Now, again, this bag is already spiked. Before, after you add the med in, have to take the bag. That just means blah, blah, blah. Okay, label it, attach your IV drip set, okay, and then prime it, okay? It goes back to that example of dope. Okay, if this was a 250 bag, 250 ml bag, and I put my 400 milligram dopamine in here, I need to make sure this is primed with dopamine and not IV saline, right? Remember that example I showed you earlier? It took 10 minutes, it took four minutes just to get one ml into the patient because I, I have the saline lock in there. This, bat, this this happens to be about 20 mLs, 
So my patient would never receive dopamine if I just prime this with normal saline. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. So make sure you add the med, then add your drip set. Okay. I'm trying to just blaze through this because we're going to get orange too. So IV piggyback, and that's this. We have the patient. We have the bag up. This hand cut to the patient, and we have another medication running in this port. Okay. So that might mean I'm giving my patient a fluid bolus because their blood pressure is a little low and they're dehydrated, and I'm giving D10 because they're hypoglycemic. Okay. So I'm just going to run both of them at the same time. Now, in order for that to happen, the bag that you want to infuse more rapidly needs to be the one that's higher, okay? So that would be, I would need my D10 higher and my IV saline lower, that way it drips in. Does that make sense to everybody? Let's, let's grab it, right? Cool. Give me this first one. <clears throat> Any questions on that? IV pumps, we don't have them here, but the majority of them are already pre-set up to what A, what the county uses, what your particular system uses, and they're already programmed with pre-formulas pre in there for you. So all you gotta do is go in, find it, put in your little numbers that you gotta put in, and it drips in for you automatically, okay? For those of you that work in a hospital or when you guys do your hospital rounds, Please slowly take a look at those those pumps because you guys may be exposed to those in your system. Okay. For those of you who are probably gonna end up working in Manatee County or Hillsborough County or Podunk, Polk County, okay, you're gonna have, you might have pumps because you have long transport times to the hospital. Yes. When you say we don't have pumps here, you mean it's full of Pinellas County. Oh. Oh, Pinellas County cares pumps? No, it's just general care. Just the CCT, just the CCT trucks, just because CCT. We have backup CCT medics that run on regular trucks that have their own pump. But most of your critical care trucks will have those. Unfortunately, for your fire departments, we don't have them just because we're at the hot. There's a hospital on every corner, you ask me. So, the one thing you have to worry about, and usually the machine will let you know, is air in the line. What's bad about air in the line? And air in bliss. Does anybody know how many mLs of air we have to have in order to kill somebody? Yeah, the book says 200. So if you get those little bit of bubbles, don't worry about it. But you don't want you don't want to see. You know, you checked it. Oh, it's good. You send them back looking up memes online or whatever. And you've got a lot of transport, and the guy doesn't want to talk to you. And the next thing you know, all you see is a bunch of air in the line. So how how? Really good really they're bank. They're bank. Bank memes. 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 In the AC, what do patients like to do? In their arms. What happens at that point? Kinks. A little plastic tube inside their vein kinks, and then what happens to the machine? It beeps at you, saying, hey, dumbass, look at me. Something's wrong. Okay? So, you just gotta tell the patient to keep their arms down. All right, usually there's multiple chambers for multiple units. You'll see, once you guys who go to St. Anthony's or Bayfront, because that's common too. I usually go to when I drop off patients. They have like this one machine and it's like eight chambers on the side of it. Again, the machine used the same the same calculations we just learned, except it's already pre-programmed for you. So the machine will say what's your dose. The machine will say how long you want to do it for, and it does the rest for you. That's nice. All right, IOs. We really touched on those already, do I need to hit on those anymore? Okay. One thing you do need to know about the I.O. is that if it doesn't flow well, odds are it won't, because my narrow space is only so big, and my bone is only so big, you will need to have a pressure infuser in on it, okay? 
so much in there that it actually will shut off the blood supply to that area. So you can imagine if it was down here in your lower leg that it would shut off the blood supply from the um, popliteal artery and you wouldn't have any flow down lower. Okay? And basically you cut off the circulation to that one area, which now makes it a compartment. For what happens when we shut off circulation to an area? What, what type tissue of dies. tissue dies because what system are we moving? We work off of what type of system normally our cells work off of? Yeah. Respiratory, which is a aerobic. aerobic system, right? So our cells are using oxygen to create glucose, which creates ATP, blah, 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 blah. We learned all that from anatomy and physiology. Mm -hmm. And that's, that, that's what your stuff, right? So anaerobic is what? The opposite of that. So now my, my my leg down here is like, dude, I'm not getting oxygen. I'm not getting blood flow. What's going to happen? So now I'm going to start eating away at my muscle tissue, which is going to give me what? It's going to start giving my cells energy, which will start working. And now they blow off. Instead of one or two CO2s, they're blowing off a bunch of CO2 and making up lactic acid. That lactic acid can potentially make me have hyperkalemia, which once that blood flow gets back into my system, High potassium is no bueno, right? Because what happens? I die. Right, so you gotta watch out for that. If you start seeing a lot of swelling in that area, you have to start turning that off. This is horrible. Next. Transdermal meds, we usually don't give those. You might see those in a uh, in the uh, ER, right? Your nitro, nitro patches. Mm -hmm. Your transdermal is going to be, what else might you see those? Out the field. Fentanyl. Fentanyl patches. Lidocaine right. patches. patches. Okay. But make sure we do what with those patches when we take them off. We wipe the area. We wipe the area. Okay. Because that medication is still being absorbed. And don't place your AD patch over this unless you wipe it first. Now, where else might you have to check? size of patient's skin for patches in the mouth, in the mouth right? Why? Because people like to get high. So, um, just know there's also, this, this slide's giving an example of, um, of nitroglycerin. When we give nitro sublingually, right? We, get, we can also give it intravenously through trito. We also give it dermally, right? So just give me all the different ways we can do it. There's another precutaneous way, it's called buccal, which is in between the gums. Again, we're not putting oral gel inside someone's gums. Help grandma out. Not doing that. Just know there are meds that we can give in and out. We used to have ocular medications here, but we're not usually giving anything in the eye. You know what I mean? People don't like having eyes. I wear contacts and I still don't like my eyes like that. There's those. Usually I get for pain. I don't know any meds that we give in the ear canal, but if you can think of one, I'd like to hear it. That we give? Yeah. I mean, we don't give anything. I know the hospital sometimes put lidocaine in the ear, but that's just to kind of numb up the area. That's because usually there's a bug in someone's ear. It's gross. But if you ever get a chance to go see one that's on the ER, it's cool. Mm. And take it out with the McGill forceps or something. Okay. So here's intranasally. This is a medication we give uh, quite frequently. Right. We give Narcan intranasally, we give fentanyl intranasally, we give Versed intranasally. It's very quick and efficient. I know Mr. Walker had the group on the lab day kind of went over the MAD device. Remember, you don't want to call it, um, it's actually atomizing it. It's not taking the tiny droplets, okay? It's breaking into a very fine mist for you. 
Notice down here it says it requires two and a half to two times the amount of medication. That's going to be all protocol based. So whatever the protocol says to give is what you do. What's one important thing about nasal medication that we want to know? How many can I give in each nasal? One cc. How many cc's? One, one ml per one cc. Or one ml per an air, right? <laughs> so if I have a, if I give out my med and it says I have to give 1.6 mLs, do I have to break it up into 0.8 and 0.8, or can I just give all of one and then give 0.6 of the other? Either way. Either way, right? Which way is probably easier? One and, one and then the rest. One and then the rest, because the majority of time it's going to be on some kid who's seizing or some some adult who's seizing, and their their head's not going to cooperate with you, and you're going to make an error. So just give the one, and then figure out, the only thing that should be left in your vial is whatever you have to give left, okay? 